During the Napoleonic Wars, the British took the Dutch colony in South Africa, and the Boers, the descendants of the Dutch colonists, lived there under British rule until 1835. But then, as a result of new taxes, a ban on slavery, lack of land, and dominance of British culture and language, they embarked on the great trek to find new land. They initially set up the Republic of Natalia, but this was quickly annexed by the British in 1843. There were some further clashes between the Boers and the British, like at Boom Platz in 1848, but the Boers were free to form two new republics, the Orange Free State and Transvaal. And their independence was recognised by the British at the Sand River and Orange River Conventions in the 1850s. Each state had a population of around 100,000 people, and their politics were intertwined. For instance, Pretorius was president of both republics. But they never united because they feared that the British might declare their past conventions void if they did so. Pretorius' call for a union almost resulted in a war between the two states in the 1850s, and in the 1860s, after Pretorius resigned as president of Transvaal, Stephanus Schumann was appointed as acting president. But he later refused to give up his post, and Paul Kruger fought him in a short civil war to remove him from power. Nevertheless, the Boer republics continued to fight against their African neighbours, the Basutus and the Zulus. Basutuland, however, sought British protection from the Boers, and what is now Lesotho came under British control in 1869. Meanwhile, there was a semi nomadic mixed race group of people called the Greeka. They had set up a series of short lived republics throughout the mid 19th century, and they established a new republic at Clip Drift when diamonds were discovered there. But after thousands of British began to arrive in the diamond rich republic, they agreed to become part of the British Empire. The British therefore began to take more interest in the Boer republics and their newfound mineral wealth, especially after the financial panic of 1873. The Boer republics, meanwhile, were nearing bankruptcy and fighting the petty people in the north over land and were still threatened by the Zulu in the south. And after the Pedi defeated the Boers in battle, the Boer republics agreed to be annexed by the British in 1877. The British in South Africa, meanwhile, continued to expand by annexing the Greeka and Kosa states, and in 1879 they defeated the Zulus. However, with no more threats from African states, this freed the Boers to voice their disapproval over their annexation. And in 1880, 10,000 Boers gathered under Paul Kruger and declared independence. The British were quick to send troops north, but they were ambushed at Bronkhortspreit, and the British continued to be defeated over the next couple months. But although many from the Orange Free State went to fight for Transvaal, its president, Johannes Brand, remained neutral. Then, in January, the British tried to advance north again, but at the Battle of Leng's Neck, the entrenched boards were largely unaffected by British artillery shells. Then, their sharpshooters were able to pick off the British soldiers who wore bright red uniforms. The Boers then began to harass British supply and communication lines, so the British moved to defend the roads to Newcastle. However, in early February, the British were attacked at the Ingogo River. They again suffered many losses and retreated as heavy rainfall swelled the river. The final battle came in late February, when the British climbed onto Majuba Hill, overlooking the Boers' main position. But the Boer marksmen once again picked off the British, and they fled after Major General Colley was killed. The following month, Lindenburg fell to the Boers. The British Prime Minister Gladstone believed that continuing the war would require far more men, so signed a truce. Thanks to the Boers' unconventional tactics, they managed to deliver Britain's first real military defeat since the American War of Independence. But the peace came just as the scramble for Africa began, and new nations like Italy and Germany began to look for colonies in Africa. This in turn would help cause the Second Boer War just a few years later. 